part four of our conditional loop series and we're going to look at a financial example because we all like money and we want to talk about how we can use loops to determine money problems or money uh, solutions hopefully so let's take an example what do we need for our example um in our for loop series we did an example where we try to find out how much money we would have after a certain period of time now in this case we can do it slightly differently i want to find out how long it's going to take me to get to a certain goal so i don't know how many times to do the loop so that's why i'm using a conditional loop and instead of knowing how many times to do the loop I'm, i've got a goal to reach so the first thing i need is the goal amount which is the amount of money that I want to obtain. How much money do you want to save? Or maybe you know there's a, a trip you want to go to overseas and you know how much money you want to save. So you want to say you want to look at how long it's going to take you to get to that goal. Uh, we're going to be able to pay money into the bank account every month. So because I'm monthly payments, so every month we can add money to the bank. Okay. And the bank's going to give us a really good interest rate. So, so how much money is added to it every month? So we're going to have compound interest. So how much money gets added to our bank account from the bank? And we're going to have a starting amount, a starting deposit. We've got some money saved. We're going to put that into the bank account so we get at some point to start with. So that's basically what we're going to look at. So we're going to look at that scenario. So we're going to start, let's say we've got 2,000 Rand saved. We can put that money into the bank account. So I'm going to put that money into another variable, which is going to record how much money is in the bank account. I want to keep track of how much I start off with because I'll at the end of the video, I'll show you an example with, of what you can do there. But for this case, I'm going to have a brand new variable, which is going to be the amount of money that's in the bank account every month. So we start it off, we initialize it to what our deposit is. So it starts off being 2,000 Rand. And uh, let's say our goal is to get to 20,000. And we are able to put 500 Rand in every month. And the bank's given us a 6.4% interest every month. Now, that's ridiculous interest rate. That's way too high. But that's for the scenario. Let's just use that. So we're going to keep track of these values. So I'm going to put uh, the goal amount in there and I'm going to put the, we're going to put 500 Rand monthly uh, payments and our interest rate is going to go there and our total saved will go there. So that's how much is in the bank account at the moment because we put in 2000 Rand. So what do we do now? We need to work out for each month, we need to work out the interest amount and we're going to, need to obviously add to that total saved. So let's start with the first month. And there are two steps that we need to do for this. It obviously depends on your scenario. For this scenario, we are going to calculate the interest first and then we add the interest and the payments to the account. So step one would be to calculate the interest. And that's calculated as the interest rate divided by 100 because 6.4 is not a percentage. You must convert it to a percentage. So 6.4 divided by 100. Now it's a percentage. We take that 6.4% and we multiply 6.4% of what you've saved so it's of means time so 6.4 percent of the 2000 so we take that 2000 which is what we've saved and we take the 6.4 percent and we work that out to be 128 that's how much interest we will get after the first month so i'll store that into some interest amount variable so that's how much money i'm going to get from the bank okay so what i'm going to do at the end of that month well i'm going to take all of these three values and add them together so i'm going to take my 2000 rand which is currently in the bank account I'm going to take the interest, which I've just calculated. I'm going to take that 500. I'm going to put it in at the end of this month and add them all together. I'm going to get 2,628 probably. What do I'm going to do with that? Well, I'm putting it back into the total saved because total saved must change. It must keep changing. So it now changes to 2,628 because that's how much money will be left in the bank account after month one, after my interest is calculated, after my monthly payment's been added, so on. So those are the two steps. Well, let's do it for, for the second month. Let's just see. Well, we take in, the, we need to work out the interest again. So it's the, whatever's currently in the total saved, because it's a little bit more now, because we added some monthly payments and we got some interest. So we want compound interest, interest on interest. So we're going to take that 2,628. We're going to get 6.4% of that. Well, now we're going to get into some decimal numbers. Yeah, there we go. Some decimal numbers. That's our interest that we're going to get after month two. And then our step two was to take those three values. We're going to take what's currently in the bank account, which is a little bit more than last month, plus our new interest amount, which has got a little bit more because we've got more money in our bank account. And we're going to take that 500 and plug it all together. And that becomes my new total saved. And that's going to go back into total saved. So you see our, our money is accumulating quite nicely now. It's, it's, not, it's more than just if we had just saved this money in, in the bottom of our bed and just left it there and just put 2,000 Rand and gave 500 Rand every month. It's accumulating a lot quicker. So we're going to keep doing this whole process until we get to our goal, which is 20,000. So we want to stop there. I've gone ahead and just worked out. We're probably going to need about 17 months to be able to get there. 
to get to a total of 20,000. So you can see how total saved is increasing every month and at some point it'll get to 20,000 and that's when we will stop. So let's go see how we do this in Delphi. So here we got our program. We're going to get in values from edit control. So that way we can adjust the scenario and find our different options. So we got our 500 rand a month. Uh, we got our interest rate. That's our goal and that's our starting amount. And when we when display and see how it grows with compound interest. So I get in all my inputs and I've got some nice little headings going. And so the key here is I want, we, we, although we've got our deposit amount, I keep it separate because I want to keep, I want to have a variable that's going to be changing every month you see what's in it so i give it a starting amount now if you've got no money in your bank account your starting amount will be zero but in this case we get given a deposit so i'm going to say r saved is equal to whatever that deposit amount is it's going to start off being 2000 rand for example and we need a looping variable that's going one two three four because we want to work out how long this is going to take so we don't have a looping variable in a while loop so we're going to make our looping variable which represents a month so we start off at zero and every time we do a, a loop we're going to increase it so that'll be month one and then month two and then month three and then month four and so on so that's what we're going to be doing now step one we're going to be working out the interest so there's the interest so we take the interest rate we divide it by 100 and we multiply our set now i'm rounding it so that we get to two decimal places so that we're not dealing with like a half a cent for example so that's our step one and then over here would have been our step two where we take our interest amount and our payments and we take it and we add it onto what's in the bank account and that becomes the new bank account value. Remember the RTC principle? We need to initialize, which we did there, and we need to test it, which we're going to get to, but we need to change the value inside the loop. So our saved is actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's, it's taking its own value and changing it, and that's how you do that whole compound process. And then we display the months and we display how much money is in the bank account every month so we can see how it's going. Now, we've done the initialization, or there, initialization, and we've done the change. How, what, what test are we going to do? Well, we want to keep doing this while we, we need to reach our goal. So there's a relation between R saved and the goal. So let's write in R saved. When R saved and R goal, those are my two values there. Now, I want to keep doing this while R saved is less than my goal the moment r saved equals the goal or is more than the goal we can stop doing the loop so that's my test so while r saved is less than the goal keep doing the loop let's see if that works we should get an answer of 17 that's when we we will get above twenty thousand. that's what we want to get we're going to go boom there we go stops at 17 you can see there just creeped over to 20,000 over 20,000 now it can stop because we've reached our goal now we know that after 17 months we can go on our overseas trip if we need that now if we need to go a bit sooner we can go okay well let's uh maybe we can give some uh more money every month let's say i'm gonna give 700 rand every month and we go oh it's gonna oh, oh, i need to give a bigger deposit maybe i've got a far i can borrow money from someone or drop a bank or something oh there we go that way i'll i'll be able to re reach my amount within the year so that we can see how the changes are effective okay so if we had a repeat loop if we were doing this in a repeat way you could literally would do everything the exact same but your end condition here would be the opposite of that r so r saved well until r saved is greater than equal to your r i goal so that's what would happen if you had a repeat loop now i'm going to do another scenario i'm not going to use the goal amount i want to continually doing this program until we have increased our bank account by five times for example that means if we start off with 2,000, I want to keep going until the starting, uh, starting the amount that we start off with is five times bigger. In other words, 10,000. Now, that could change depending on what the starting amount is. I'm not going to make it a static 10,000. But let's say we want to save until our we've got five times the deposit amount. Okay, so that's why. Let's see how we're going to do that. So we want. So there's no relationship between the goal anymore. The relationship now is between our saved and the deposit Okay, so let's have a look. So our deposit until now our deposit at the moment is two thousand. Okay, and our saved will be a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the number that's changing. So we want to keep while this number is 
less than the depo five times the deposit. In other words, the deposit times it by five. Times it by five. So while it's less than that, keep doing the loop. Do you see how we want to say five times the deposit? So we're going to say the deposit times five. So, so that number is going to get bigger. So we take that default value of 2,000 times of 5. When the R saved is, while it's less than 5 times it, keep doing the loop. The moment it's greater than 5 times, it'll stop. So if I run that, we calculate. You see it stops when it gets above 10,000. And if we put in a deposit of 5,000, it will do the loop until it's 5 times that, until it's 25,000. Okay. So that's why we must have separate values. You, can, you can't go R saved is equal. Now, because R deposit and R saved are the same, you can't go R saved equal to five times R saved. No number is ever going to be different to five times itself. Okay, so you must be careful of that. So you need, when you're comparing variables, they need to be two very different variables that you compare. You can't compare a variable to itself every single time because it needs to compare to something else. So there's an example of if you want five times your deposit. For the other videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear feedback from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.